Hi, Susan. Hi, Jackie. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. How you doing, Ian? Thank you. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for having us. Of course. Yeah. So uh, in a few minutes, uh, just tell me about yourselves and, and what you do. Sure. <laughs> Okay, I guess I'll start. Um, my name is Susan Dilworth. I'm also known as um, Serendipity. I am a financial literacy advocate, and you're about to also meet my amazing business partner, Jackie Garcia. We're really happy to be here today on Raise the Bar, um, discussing all types of different ways that we as business women uh, have succeeded. But one of the main things that I guess I could say about myself is I came to America from Germany. I'm a military brat. I was raised in Europe. So when I came to America, I really had difficulties understanding the financial system. Oops, I'm sorry to turn my phone on the side. Uh, the American system and ran into a lot of challenges and obstacles as I was trying to set up my, my businesses here. Uh, I just realized that I wasn't financially literate and I needed help. And I was able to find a company that really uh, moved the, um, just moved my bottom line along in all aspects of my business, of my finances, and of my wealth. And that's when I ran into Jackie. Yes. So my name is Jackie um, Garcia. They call me Jackie of all trades. And um, I'm originally from New York. I'm from the Bronx, born and raised. I come from a Latino household and the lack of financial literacy, it's, it's huge in minorities, right? Um, in our household. And um, one thing about me is that I've always been, being born in the Bronx, um, I had to learn a lot of things, you know, if I wanted to get out of that environment, I had to uh, be open-minded to learn as many things as I can to just, you know, do better and give my family better. So I moved to Florida and I'm in Tampa, Florida. And um, I, I met Susan through this amazing platform and we just been impacting our community uh, left and right, left and right, you know, double tag teaming uh, our people. So it's a blessing to just and an honor to be on here with you guys, right? What better than with uh, with you and um, and Susan. Wonderful. Yeah. So tell me what, tell me more about your business that you guys have now. Okay. Yeah, sure. Uh, do you want to go ahead, Jackie? You want to start off? Go ahead. Uh, yeah. So um, I was actually introduced to uh, UCS, which is a um, nonprofit organization back in 2018. And um, unfortunately, I had made some mistakes, right? Because my parents couldn't teach me what they did not know. So I did not know anything about credit. And um, I had some, you know, boo-boos, you would say. Uh, I had some uh, a repo, medical collections. I also had student loans, right? Um, I had went to school here in Florida for nails and skin care. And that put a little debt in my uh, credit with a debt behind it of um, $2,000. The repo was about $4,000. And when I was introduced to this amazing platform, it made sense because I didn't know anything, but I was more involved, hands hands on. You know, I was involved in this uh, amazing platform and um, amazing program that's been able to help two point million uh, individuals and families across the U.S. So, with twelve services that we offer, um, four out of the twelve is is more focused on your credit, but the rest is financial literacy. So you can you know uh, get out of your debt and um, and 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 understand the world of finances, right? So now we learn to teach, so we could teach to teach, and eventually we're gonna meet at the beach if you're in Florida, or we're gonna meet at the bank. Either way, we're okay. <laughs> yeah, my my family is actually in Tampa. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So if I have this right, you guys, you help people repair their credit, combined with. Uh, just grow their finances and learn how to save, invest, all, all, the, all those topics? All those above, right, that's correct. So what we offer is a solution. Um, we're not saleswomen. We offer a solution to a problem, just the same problem that Jackie explained she had 
the same problems that I was running into. And what happens when you have bad credit is, um, you know, you're kind of embarrassed about it. Like Jackie said, you know, there's boo-boos. You don't really want to be so transparent about what happened in your life. But at the end of the day, it is your adult report card, right? You can't really go anywhere. Uh, uh, and it, it stands for who you are and your word that you gave lenders or you gave any type of situation um, where you were going into a, a, a pain situation, like I'm obligated to make these payments. And you know, life happens. And that's what Jackie and I really understand in this company as well. So even though credit restoration is one of our flagship products, and of course, that is one that might start the conversation with customers that we have, what we offer is a protection plan. It's the UCES protection plan. And not only does it restore, it also builds and it protects your credit. Because as soon as you come up to certain levels in your credit, there's different options that you can do and you're flooded. And again, if you don't understand the system, if you don't, if you can't go back to the Fair Credit Reporting Act of 1970 and understand the basis of how the system was built for America and Americans, then you'll always fall into the same trap holes. We are, we are, we're humans. We're creatures of nature. We, we, um, we uh, conduct ourselves in cycles, right? So if you want to break out of the cycle, then you need to understand and comprehend on your level, in your fragments of understanding where, where you are, pick you up where you are, right? Because we deal with so many people from so many walks of life. So you might, one day we might be, you know, talking to a business owner who has just always done cash all his life. But I mean, he's highly intelligent, but he just has cash businesses. Let it be a food truck or a club or, um, or anything of those nature where it's just cash transactions rare, but it happens, right? And they have absolutely no credit built up. We've heard from realtors that they've had people wanting to close with millions in the bank, right? Cash, but have no credit history because they just never needed it until the point comes when they're like, oh my goodness, I'm just going to settle down. I want to buy a car. I want to buy a house. So we definitely have conversations with all walks of lives and we really want to bring this solution um, closer and it's very simple and that's what's really great about it how do you guys get clients mm -hmm. how do you how do you get your name out <laughs> so i mean we there's different ways of um we have a daily method of operations and um it's it's how to brand yourself because um people are going to do business with who they know like and trust and if they don't know and like you and trust you, they're not going to do business with you. I mean, it doesn't matter what you got to sell. If I if I had pool noodles, but they like me, trust me, and knew me, they're going to buy it. You know, they're going to they're going to do business with me. So um, we market uh, on different groups on social media. We go live. Um, we share a lot of free game. We share a lot of um, uh, we educate our clients, right? We educate our people. It's about educating, educating others, right? So we learn so we can teach. And when we just do that genuinely, people are going to genuinely reach out to you with those, you know, problems that they are ashamed of speaking because they feel comfortable with you. They trust you. They see that you are just like them. It don't matter where you come from. My background, you know, my childhood wasn't easy. I have a story just like Susan has a story. I'm sure you, um, Ian, has a story. And if people knew how relatable we are to them and how they are to us, then, you know, that's how uh, we gain a lot of uh, people to follow us and, and just do business with us. We go out there uh, out, out off of social media and we also, you know, we, we go out there and we knock on doors and not literally knocking on doors, but we go into places and we let them know what we are and who we are and what we have to offer. And that's how we, you know, pretty much do it. I mean, there's so many, a lot of ways, but we're going to, you know, let Susan um, serendipity share her marketing um, expertise as well. Yeah, we're grassroots, definitely. Like Jackie said, you know, we really talk to everybody. And I think that's what makes us passionate um, advocates for financial literacy. We're not here. Of course, our company offers an amazing compensation plan. Of course, nothing that someone does should not get compensated for. But your passion, your level of passion to help people is how you get paid. 
So the more you're a servient person in your community and you understand that, like Jackie said, minorities and different people just didn't have access to financial literacy through their parents or have things set up for them by their parents. And I can't even blame my dad. You know, I, I, I don't know what happened, <laughs> to be honest with you. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure, but did I travel all of Europe? Am I bilingual? Did I go to a boarding school? Did I have the best of everything? Yes, but when I got to be an adult and, and especially coming into the system in my, in my 40s almost, um, I, I felt very young. I felt very, um, very juvenile because I was just so helpless and, and even not helpless and not knowing, helpless and not knowing where are my resources. That was my biggest issue because I was running to the bank. Of course, I was talking to different people, um, but there was no resources. And I think as soon as Jackie and I put ourselves out there as transparent with our stories, um, because we, we actually help people understand that we're not ashamed. This is real. And we know that you're going through the same thing, or you know somebody who's going through the same thing as well. Yeah. So let's let's have open discussions, just like on this packum. Let's let's just talk about it. So another thing that we do is we go to networking events, right? I'm a love. We are. I love going to networking <laughs> events, gathering business cards, being able to send people information after I've met them is great. My Uber drivers, I leave business cards, and I travel a lot, so I leave business cards in hotels. I leave business cards at conferences. I leave business cards where I just, you know, went to eat at Starbucks, um, anywhere where I can put out my information. That's where I leave cards. Mm -hmm. It's all over my car. <laughs> it's everywhere. We love this stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sure you both experienced many obstacles in starting a business. It's difficult to go from a guaranteed income to, you know, not a guaranteed income. What are, how did you overcome mental blocks or problems that literally arose uh, when you were making a transition to starting your own business? Good one. You go. Okay. All right. I will go. So yeah, that's a, that's a real great question, Ian. And um, so for me personally, it was the big moment when, um, even though Germany is a wonderful country and I miss it so, 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 so much, I was just hitting the glass ceiling everywhere, left and right. I just felt undervalued and just over, over what do you call it? Not over talented, but um, when you're just over a job, you know, it, it, it just felt like I could never fit in, right? Um, Overqualified. Overqualified, exactly. It was a bumper sticker moment for me. I'm not gonna lie. It literally said, "Go where you're celebrated and not where you're tolerated," and that's what made me change. But I knew that if I do take this decision and move to America, I have to become a business owner. That is the that is that is that is the way to do it, right? Um, I made a contract with myself. I literally sat down and said, if I can sign a contract or an agreement with someone I don't even know, just because they put an ad up in a newspaper or on an online uh, portal, I need to be able to make that with myself because I know me and I trust me and I know me is going to do the best for me, right? I mean, that just makes sense. So that was one of my first um, mental commitments. I think there's a, there's a mental commitment to yourself. Those called for me getting up at certain times. They called for uh, gym. They called for workouts. They called for a lot of stuff that just um, caused discipline. Discipline. And then those are the things that when tough times come and obstacles come, which they do, are that carry you through. It's the commitment that you can go back to, to yourself. And if you really have it written out on a piece of paper and your goals written out, because let's say you, you earn $5,000 at a job, right? Well, what does that consist of? How does that break down into an hourly rate, even into a minute rate, even to every 14 minutes? If you've ever had a lawyer or a tax consultant, right? They charge you by 15 minutes on the phone call. Have you ever seen that? Right? So you really need to break down what you want to earn at the end of the day. You have to break it down to the minute sometimes. And then you have to make sure that you're holding yourself accountable to that time because time is money and time is value. So for me, it was really discipline, 
focus and commitment is what carries me through and then choosing the right business partners. That's very important. How you, how you do something is how you do everything. Yes. Mm -hmm. And how you handle the small is how you'll handle the big. That's right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm, I'll make mine's real, you know, short and sweet, right? Um, so I've always been, you know, uh, a nine to five, right? Um, that's all I knew. Uh, I just knew how to work hard, uh, be very disciplined and be on time. Like I, I, would, I wouldn't call out. I, I mean, I was always like, I didn't want to look bad. I don't want to look bad or make anybody look bad, you know? But then I realized that there was so much more out there that I wasn't um, aware of. And when I was introduced to network marketing, when I was introduced to entrepreneurship, I was about 36, 35 years old. Um, I'm 40 years young. I'm a mother of three. And I knew that there was more out there that I, I, I had a purpose, right? I wanted to, to, to serve my purpose. And behind a cubicle, um, asking permission to go to the bathroom, asking permission to go to the, you know, take a lunch break, wasn't it. So I wanted more. And I, and I stumbled across this program and I knew I can help a lot of people, just my Latin people, I'm bilingual. And, um, and people trust me, right? Because coming from New York, either you either real or you fake. And your word means a lot in the street. And I wanted to make sure that I always, since young, I, I, I grew up a certain type of way and, and, and surpassed that, right? And, and show people and prove people that I was better than that, that I knew better. Doesn't matter where you come from, it's okay, you know? But um, so yeah, network marketing um, did really change my, my, my whole, um, everything in my life. Um, I'm able to now pour into others. I'm able to, you know, the, the, it was scary. Leaving my job and, and quitting and firing my boss that was that's my homegirl. My boss was my homegirl. I worked for insurance as a total loss claims assistant, getting paid eighteen dollars an hour. You know that was good, but it wasn't enough because guess what? When there was a a hurricane or a flood in a state, we had to sit there and do OT, mandatory. There was no questions. Weekends, I was stuck in there. I didn't have time with my daughter. You know, dropping her her off at daycare, the traffic, the this, the that. I mean, that just drives people insane. And just getting that little piece of being my own boss, working at my time, um, you know, being available more for my family, doing things. I mean, it, it just changed my life and taking a leap of faith because, you know, you never know when God is sending you your blessings. And mine's came in the um, in the form disguised as bad credit. I would have never known that having bad credit would open the doors to meeting amazing people and having amazing uh, a support system behind me. Because yes, when you start a business, your warm market, your family, your friends, they're not the ones that are gonna support you. They're the ones that are gonna shut you down. That are gonna say, this is not, this is not it. Don't leave your job for this. You, you, you know, you're crazy. Why would you do that? You know, that's a scam, that's a pyramid, blah, 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 blah. But you have to be strong, and 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 understand that that's coming, that that's going to happen. You have to prepare yourself mentally for those things because if not, you will quit before you even get started. And that's where a lot of people mess up. And you can't quit before you get started. You have to get started and 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 give it your one fifty. If you didn't give your one fifty, one hundred percent, one hundred and fifty percent, then you really didn't. You know, you can't say it didn't work. You didn't work. You didn't have that commitment. You didn't believe in yourself. So a lot of a lot about network marketing and being an entrepreneur is self development. Okay, it's self development, and that's something that I've learned in these you know five years of being in network marketing. It's just a blessing. Like I, I tell you, it's just a blessing. I could go on and on and on, but you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, it's ironic that our family members and our close ones are always the first to shut us down, almost, yeah. and when we do succeed one day they're like oh, i always believed in you but did you you know right it what i try to advise people is when you have a really bright idea of something you may want to do a leap of faith that many people may not agree with keep it to yourself at first because mm -hmm. other people's mindsets and, and influence can infect your 
way of thinking and, and your inspiration. And that happens over, that's happened to me many times. And it, it's almost when we really want to do something that could change our life, we want to tell everyone. And yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And that's why we're so excited about, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. It's okay. You, you really should keep it to yourself at first because mm-hmm. when you start telling people before you do it, your brain sends signals that you already did it. So it actually decreases your motivation almost. So wow. people mm-hmm. really should, uh, when they feel inspiration, they should just go for it. And then you say, and you let people know, hey, I'm, I did this. Yeah. And, uh, it's best to move in silence, right? And let your success and all of that of the above uh, make the noise for you. That's one thing that I've learned as well, you know, uh, because, uh, yeah, a lot of times when people share their ideas and their dreams, you know, um, it's like they're looking for validation. Like they're looking for someone to validate them and be like, you know, yes, that's good. You know, they're looking for that. But you have to validate yourself. You have to believe in yourself. Um, and, you know, and, and, and your goals and dreams are not everybody else's. That's my journey. That's my path to take. You know, um, a lot of, you know, was the, you know, the richest place on earth is the cemetery because that's where a lot of dreams die. Okay. They go there and they die. People have died and so talented. It's just crazy, you know, and I want to be able to be a, you know, leave a legacy. I want people to know who Jackie of all trades was. Well, speaking of legacy, what legacy do you both want to leave behind? Oh, wow. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, So we were uh, just literally talking about that this morning on our morning grind. We have uh, our um, powwow basically with um, other leaders in this company where we gather together every single morning, weekdays from eight to nine and motivate each other, go over the daily uh, methods of operation. And today we did touch on the topic of legacy. And I was touching on one of the points in our protection plan, which is the will and trust. And as an agent, I uh, receive $100,000 in life insurance with no health questions asked, everything. So I have a few life insurances as well, but this one in particular, I was just explaining to the team that, I mean, just think about it, that you can take this money and send $10,000 after your passing to charities that you support, right? And and still keep the legacy going of financial literacy is so important as you build. So that's one part that I really want to do is um, make sure that people still have my name in their mouth after I'm gone and it's connected to wealth and, and, and building uh, each other up, empowering men and women, especially young people, to take a hold of their finances sooner than later. So those are definitely things that are very, very important to me. And in this company um, itself, a portion of every single um, fee that our customers um, don't, uh, you know, put into the service goes to our uh, Youth Financial Literacy Foundation, which is a nonprofit as well. And we are able to um, give out spa- uh, scholarships every single year. I think to date we've given out $2.5 million um, in scholarships to young people who write financial literacy essays, uh, they can apply through us as agents. And we're very, very proud of it because we know that every single customer that we're building up, we're helping some young person um, actually learn about financial literacy. We also go in schools. We do a lot of activities um, in our communities and the company gives us these tools and opportunities to do so. That's wonderful. Yep. yep. And, um, as for me, uh, leaving a legacy, right? Um, it's pretty much, I used to not think this way, right? Those things didn't matter. Having a life insurance didn't matter. Having a living will and trust didn't matter because, you know, we're young. We think we're going to live forever, right? We want to make sure now I want to know, you know, I want to make sure that I secure what I've worked hard for. Um, I teach my children to do the right things when I'm no longer here. So whatever I've worked hard for or what my parents have worked hard for, um, they don't destroy it when I'm gone. 
because that happens. So we have to educate um, our our loved ones, right? Those that, you know, uh, at least my children, I want to make sure that they have the same entrepreneur spirit. They, they you know, want to be a boss and not a not an employee, right? It's okay to be an employee maybe at the beginning. It's okay to work for somebody else's dreams, but don't forget about yours. When you're off of that nine to five, you want to make sure that you're working on your dreams. And um, and I just want my 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 great great grandkids to know that no matter how tough things get, you still continue to push. You don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Have multiple multiple streams of income because that's what's gonna take you there. Um, and and just you know, and be a a a a servant leader and um and a woman of God, a man of God, right? God first, family second, business third. So. You know, my legacy is pretty much, you know, just leaving behind what I've become and inspiring my family and others to do, you know, to be better, to be better than me. And I won't be forgotten. They'll know who we are. <laughs> we won't be forgotten. Right, Susan? <laughs> you guys both are very transparent and well-spoken. I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, well, tell me about some of your biggest accomplishments so far within your business. Okay. Uh, want me to go? Yeah, sure. <laughs> All right. So, um, so I started in 2018. Um, I really, you know, didn't take this serious. I was doing my nine to five. I was comfortable, right, doing what I was doing. Um, and then I saw results. Within four months, my repossession was gone. Rest in peace, the $4,000 that I owed, right? That was buried. I didn't have to pay it back. Um, the student loan uh, issues was resolved. Uh, my medical collections was also removed. I get asthma and um, that's why I moved to Florida. But I usually, sometimes of the year, I end up in the hospital. So um, seeing those results spoke volume to me. Um, that's when, you know, they tell you, you have to get, you know, five referrals so you don't pay your monthly fee. Or if you are a business, you know, if you're an, a, a, an affiliated agent and a client together, um, you get five referrals, bring in five people, whether it's clients or, or a combination of business partners, and um, you won't have no business overhead. Our business overhead was $89. Jackie knew five people in her household, okay, that she could waive her fee. So that was a no brainer. But until I didn't see results, I didn't take it serious. I, I needed to see results. I was already burnt with a previous company as a client. I'm not going to say their name, right? Because some people might see results with that company. And, you know, unfortunately, I did not. I thought that they were part of the law, you know, because that, you know, that's what, you know, that's what they, they say they are. Uh, they had attorneys or something like that, right? They had nothing. I was with them for like a year and seven months and I never saw results, unfortunately. Um, so fast forward, uh, a year in the business, I was able to replace my income from insurance. I was able to fire my boss and take that leap of faith. When I did that, that happened in May of 2019. Um, my dad was diagnosed with colon cancer in July of 2019. I'm the oldest of two. I'm the one that speaks better English than, you know, my other sibling. And um, I'm always involved with the doctors and things like that. So when this happened, I was scared because not only did I walk away from corporate America to do this full time, but now I had to be there for my dad. And it just, you know, again, you never know when God is going to send you your blessings. And mine's came in the form of having bad credit. Sorry. Ooh, sorry about that, guys. No problem. I Computer, my MacBook is connected to my phone and it, uh, yep, it just did something right there. No problem. But, um, so yeah, so, um, after walking away from corporate America, I was still doing the business, even at the hospitals, like in the hospital, I would do zoom calls, zoom training in English, in Spanish. I mean, you name it, the, 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 the drive was there. The motivation was even more there because my dad became more of my why, why I had to do this. So, oh my mm -hmm. goodness. My brother is not understanding. <laughs> um, sorry about that. Um, but I've been able to, um, you know, create a, you know, a six, it's, it's, it's um, revenue for the company, um, a six figure 
a month. So our team generates $50,000 in business every 30 days. Okay. I'm what you call an executive elite or an executive sales director. The next position after that is vice president. So that just means that I've been able to help a lot of people and, um, and I have a nice little solid team, you know, people that, that, that we hold each other accountable and we have the same goals and vision. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm super blessed because I know where I'm going and we're going straight to the top, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Give me one second. I'm going to text my brother one. <laughs> okay. Jackie, um, as you can hear, is an absolute beast in this business. She is um, a servient leader, and I am on her team. Uh, so that is really her success is my success. My success is her success. So we, we really go hand in hand. But yes, through this company, I was able to, I had zero credit. So I'm coming from a totally different place. I had no boo-boos. I had no nothing. I had like I said, nothing. I was at zero. Or I think when I opened my first Wells Fargo account, it automatically gave me like 200 points. So I was like at a 300. I don't even know if anybody's ever seen scores like that. But uh, through this company, I was able to reach the upper 500s within the first 30 days that I had signed up and started working with them. Now, again, to a lot of people, that doesn't sound great. And Honestly, I still use it as my testimony. I signed up on the 19th of December, right before Christmas. They told me the same thing. Hey, get five people excited about this uh, company and um, we'll waive your services. And every, er, at, at that point, I was so thirsty for information that everything that they were showing me, I, I, I just went and did it. So by, and this was the, this was the kick though. And this is, I think, the German in me kicked in because they told me that I would get paid even on holidays. And that year, that Thursday, because we get paid every week on a Thursday, they said, if you guys do this now, you will get a check on Christmas Day. And I didn't believe it. I said, you got to show me this. So I went out, worked my magic, of course, got my five people signed up before Christmas time. And everyone in my family told me, you're never going to make it. It's Christmas time. Who's going to work on their credit when they're out doing Christmas presents? <laughs> surprise, surprise. I got my check on Christmas Day. It was about a little bit over $600. It was the best Christmas gift I've ever got. Just to tell people and to spread the good news that I had gotten to a, a upper 500. So you guys can imagine the conversations that people were looking at me kind of kind of weird, but they did hear the 70 point increase that I was talking to them about. So they're like, wow, well, if she can do that with a 400 score, I can do that with a 600 score. And it just, after that, it just came uh, like flies. So I think the biggest um, achievements is really when you're able to work with someone though and put them into their dream house, putting them into their dream car, having them call you on the phone and just screech and just, ah, you know, that kind of thing, you know, just sign ah, it up. All that. <laughs> that, is, that is for me um, just everything because you exactly know the referrals are going to go through the roof and um, people are going to come back and work with Jackie and I again and we're going to keep this company rolling. So, that's Those wonderful. are the best. Yeah. So, what is your biggest financial lesson for people starting their business? Starting out in business, you said. Starting their own business. Starting their own business. Um, well, I think what what we're really excited about um, this year, Jackie and I have expanded to a, a new company. Actually, we've taken our portfolio of personal business, of personal building, personal credit, to um, actually being able to offer building business credit, and along with that, also to help build business funding. So where we used to have to like hand over the baton to others after we built their personal credit, and that's kind of where our buck stopped, we're now able to take people further down their journey of dreams, right? Or their pathway of dreams. So if they come to us and they're like, I need a car, I need a house, I need, um, you know, different things like that. And I'm going to start a business or I already have a business, right? We are now a very holistic approach to your finances. 
and to your dreams. Not only can we put you in new houses, new cars, we can help you with financial decisions that you need to make for your business. We have a seven step plan to help you get there. It's our um, a business credit um, financial suite. Um, it's, it, has a, uh, it has a startup fee, but it also has a guaranteed $50,000 in funding. So I feel very encouraged and motivated to talk to people about that, especially young people, because you do want to think about not spending your own money. A lot of, I think our generation or where we're coming from, Jackie and I, we worked so much that we would use our own money to start our businesses. But if you really listen to the wealthy, they never use their own money. They always use credit. And, but they have, you know, let it be through families or whatever, a, a buildup of wealth already. So they have that financial backbone um, to know what to do or a father who's already very successful who can show them, oh yeah, here, boom, 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 here you go. But the majority of us don't. So being able to offer that now um, makes me feel really good about talking to people and mentoring, especially young people, into their first businesses. Yeah. And um, for me, what would be one of the lessons that I've learned um, in this, you know, uh, field, uh, starting as an entrepreneur, would be um, pretty much you have to like what you're doing. Okay, you have to really, really like what you're doing. Like you can't do something that you're unhappy with. Like this gives you the opportunity to work with the people you like. Like I don't have to, if I don't like you, I'm not going to work with you. I get to choose who I get to work with. Like I might have been sitting next to somebody in this, next to me in the other cubicle and I couldn't stand them. Right. But I had to deal with them here. We work with who we want. We build with who we want. Right. And um, and and not only that, but, you know, you you for us. Credit restoration, financial literacy is a need. It's a need. It's a necessity, right? It's a need. People want to travel. They want to do things. Unfortunately, they don't have the money for it. They're stuck on their, you know, their, their, the rat race, the nine to five, the this and that. You know, here you're able to just have the, you know, the, the opportunity to, to really enjoy what you're doing. And it's like going to college and getting paid for it. I get to learn as I, as I earn. So you learn and then you remove that L and you earn, you know? So for me, it's a thing that I have to like what I'm doing. I have to have a passion for what I'm doing. I can't wake up and be unhappy to go out there and do what I got to do just to put some food on the table. I have to serve my purpose. And this has shown me that my purpose is serving others. My purpose is seeing others accomplish their goals. Because if I help enough people get what they want, by the grace of God, I'm going to get what I want eventually. And I'm patient. I'm patient. I have faith. I know my time is coming. I have to cheer and applaud others when they win it, right? Because my time will come. But, you know, you have to really want and like what you're doing. Like, you, you, you know, when you're starting a business, it has to be your passion. It has to be something that you've been thinking about and you're going for it. Go for it. Keep going. Keep pushing. You got this. You got this. That's it. And if you know what, and if that is not what it is, is meant for you to, you know, to do, it's going to open the doors and it's going to point you, it's going to lead you in the right direction. Because that, like when I first started my first network marketing company, it was in travel. It was a travel club. Okay. I, I never traveled. I worked. I haven't been to Puerto Rico in 21 years because I work, 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 work. I used to send my kids with my parents. You go on vacation. Mommy's going to stay behind and, you know, stack up on some money, you know, work, but it's not all about working. We have to build memories. We have to enjoy our loved ones. My parents are sick. My mom is in dialysis. She's always had kidney problems. I, I am dealing with both parents, but I am blessed to be there for them. When they need me, I'm there. I don't got to ask for permission or take PTO time. You know, so I am excited of what we're doing and what we have um, come across because like Susan said, we're not only helping people, you know, fix their personal credit. Now we have the ability to offer business funding, consumer finance, financing, white labeling, personal programs, grants, personal loans, uh, online banking. I mean, we have 
It's called FinTech, right? Our financial technology. When you use Zelle or you're using PayPal or you're using a third party to send money and this and that, that's FinTech. That's the future. So now we are double dipping. We got both, you know, the best of both worlds. Not only do I have the, the average family that's trying to get a home, that's trying to buy a house, I also have business owners. I have another type of, uh, 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 you know, people I can market to and, and help accomplish their goals. Everybody needs a little boost when it comes to their businesses. Starting from fresh, they don't know what to do. I get an LLC, get your EIN number, this and that. We are able now to show them the way, hold their hand. Even realtors, we have a, a real estate program that we hold your hand and it's way more affordable than doing it through a real estate course or whatever, you know, now we're able to hold your hand and see you accomplish and sell your first house. And then we're going to let you fly, spread your wings. And fly. <laughs> Wonderful. Exactly. You guys are very inspiring. Thank you. So finally, what's a, a final message you'd like to share with the audience? Mm. Wow. <laughs> A final message that I would love to um, share with the audience is if you are searching for a solution to your personal credit, to your financial peace, to financial freedom, to financial confidence, then please get in contact with us. We can definitely help you. We have a protection plan that will help you restore, that will help you build and that will help you protect your finances beyond what you can imagine. If you're a young entrepreneur, please reach out and don't start using your own money, save your money, put it into um, uh, 401ks and different types of different uh, retirement plans, uh, life insurances and different things like that, and build your, build your business on smart credit. Not just any credit, but really smart credit. Maybe that's a different, conversation. So that is what I would really uh, want to leave with listeners is that um, we're two chicks out here, um, but we but we're ready to really um, teach and serve uh, when it comes to financial literacy. Excellent, excellent. Well, my message would be, um, again, it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter um, your current situation, right? Your current situation um, doesn't dictate your your you know your future, right? I know there's a saying for it, and I and I and I I forgot, right? I don't I I, I forgot, but um, you don't have to stay in the same situation permanently, okay? Look for resources. Look for people that are gonna inspire you, that are gonna uh, give you that push, that's gonna um encourage you to 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 keep going to you know there's always a solution to everything besides where we leave the land of the living and go to the land of the dead right there's no solution to that we know we're gonna go however while we're here there's always a solution to whatever you're going through and if it is you know being in debt we can help you the goal yes. here is to get you to be debt free we want you to be to have financial freedom right uh we are not here to sell you anything. We're here to so, you know, show you a solution to whatever it might be your problems. You might not know, but we might know somebody that might be able to help you if it ain't us. And we're going to make sure that we point you in the right direction. We want to see everybody winning. If we all winning, then who's losing, right? And my message to you is keep going. Believe in yourself. If we can do it, I come from the Bronx. I've been incarcerated, violation of probation, okay? Long time ago. I used to be in gangs. You see this pretty girl right here? Doesn't have no marks in her face. Make sure I put some Vaseline. <laughs> but right. I had to be tough. I grew up in a tough environment. And I used to feel like the ugly duckling growing up. Mm. Let's be honest. But I did a 360. I was just talking to one of my friends. And he was like, oh, my God. Somebody was talking to me about you. And they were like, remember Jackie from the gang? da 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 and he's like, I speak to her now often and she is doing great. She is doing amazing and she looks great for her age and blah, 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 you know, and that made me feel real good because a lot of people stay stuck in the hood. They stay stuck in their comfort zone. 
they don't think that there is any, there's nothing else out there, but you have to step out of your comfort zone. You have to get uncomfortable, you know, getting comfortable, but you have to take that step and you guys are in the right place at the right time. If you need any assistance, anything, just hashtag Jackie of all trades. You'll find me. Mm -hmm. Hashtag yeah. I am serendipity. Absolutely. <laughs> you'll find us. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. You guys are, you guys really show that anyone, anyone can do it. It yes. doesn't matter where you come from. Completely different backgrounds. You guys are both making it happen. And it all just takes a step forward. Yeah. Right. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate Thank it. You. Thanks Yay. for having Bye. us. Of course, we'll be in contact soon. And uh, you guys have a great weekend. Thank you. You Thanks. too. Thanks so much. No problem. Bye.